Hi everybody, my name is Greg Anderson and this is the Good Timekeeping Show. Today I want to talk about some more Casio Wave Scepter watches. All right, let's open up the case and take a look at some watches today. A few years ago I was going to do a review of this watch for YouTube. This is the Casio WVA470D watch. And uh, well, before I got around to making that video, they came up with a new version of it. And here they are together. This is the older version here on the left and on the right. This is the new one. This is the WVA M640. And this uses Casio's module 5161. At a glance, they almost look like the same watch. But as you look a little bit closer, there are some significant differences like uh, around the bezel. These numbers that are engraved are different on the watches. The markings inside the face of the watch are different. The LCD uh, little box there is slightly different. And uh, one thing that may not be as obvious in this particular shot, the old version had four buttons to access the functions and settings. And the new version only has three buttons. It does not have a button here on the upper uh, on the upper left side. So given the fact that Casio no longer sells the old version, let's just concentrate on the new version and I'll do a full in-depth review of this one. Also, while I'm at it, you know, there are some variations of this watch out there. This one that I'm showing you now has a metal bracelet for a watch band. There's another version out there that is uh, virtually identical except for it has a resin or plastic style watch band and they are about the same price. I think the plastic version, you might save about $10 or so if you look around for deals. But uh, they're basically the, the ones you're gonna find for sale on the American market. The American retailers are gonna either carry this one with the metal bracelet or the one with the resin uh, band. However, if you get a little bit adventurous and look towards uh, some of the foreign vendors, especially Japanese retailers, there are some other variations that are fun and different, and they use the same module, so they have the same features and functions. For example, this one here on the left is uh, a Japanese model. This, again, the American model that I've shown you previously. A little bit different style. It doesn't have numbers around the outside of the bezel. It almost looks a little simpler inside, and it's more of a distinct blue shade on the face of the watch. So that you can get from a Japanese uh, seller. Here's another one that I had a lot of fun with. Uh, well, it has sort of a fabric canvas watch band and it comes with that. And the face of the watch, it's very, very dark, but has a bit of a green shade to it. So there's a variation you can get from, again, the Japanese retail market. Here's one I found particularly appealing. I like that black and white look with that uh, bright white face of the watch. This is the WVA M630D 7AJF. And look at the two of them side by side. This one is actually different from this one over here on the right. The one on the right is the WVA M630TDE 7AJF. And the distinguishing difference between this one versus this one is that the watch band and the back of the watch are made of titanium. So what does that do? Well, it means that the watch is uh, noticeably lighter weight. And also apparently if uh, you're particularly have sensitive skin, that titanium might make it a little easier on your skin to wear this titanium version. And it's gonna cost a bit more. All the ones I've shown you so far are somewhere between 90 and $100 uh, if you look around for a deal. This one here that has the titanium, you're looking closer to $150 for this one. So if you think that the that's a prohibitive uh, you know, markup on the price just for those titanium pieces, maybe you won't be so thrilled with this one. But you know, uh, for the sake of uh, entertaining my YouTube audience, I thought I'd try this one out. And I, I'm, I'm not sure which one I like the best. It's, it's kind of fun to have this one that's lightweight, but uh, you know, they're, they're about the same watch. So look at them all together and you know, that's, that's kind of a fun setup. This is again, the old version that's no longer available. And here's the, uh, that American version that is currently available and then all those Japanese variations. And of course there are other Japanese variations as well as you look at the Japanese market, uh, different colors and it's mainly the color combinations. And so well, what about the Japanese market? Let me tell you, if you 
order from the Japanese market. I, I happen to do it through, you know, eBay and Amazon, basically. eBay, you know, you've got your third party vendors that are selling through eBay, and some of them are selling it from Japan. Same with Amazon, some of those third party dealers coming from Japan. And when you look at the description of the product, they often have in the fine print something about how uh, if there is some sort of import duty, the, the, the buyer has to pay that. So when it comes through customs, they, there, there may be some added fee that customs adds to the price. And since the seller really doesn't know if there will be a fee or what that fee will be, uh, that's not included in your purchase price. So I was a little bit nervous ordering from Japan at first, wondering, well, wow, how much is that going to be? Is it going to be $10, $50? What, what is the import duty on a watch like this? As it turned out, uh, with the four watches here that I ordered from Japan, none of them had the import fee added. So they, they just cost whatever, whatever the original transaction was through eBay or Amazon. That's all I paid. Uh, you may not have that experience, but that was my experience. So each of these, again, ranging from somewhere between mm, the upper 80s to $100, somewhere in that range, except for, again, this titanium one cost more. Now let's examine some of the main functions and features of these watches. First of all, they have tough solar, which means right here on the inside of the face of each watch, there's a solar cell, and that solar cell charges a rechargeable battery inside the watch. So with any luck, you'll never have to change the batteries. You'll never have to do anything to this watch. It's going to charge itself with, uh, with exposure to average, average lighting conditions that you would have in, in your life. Even if you work in an office, uh, if it's regular lighting in that office, that's enough to keep it charged up. Right here is the first watch that I ever bought that had the tough solar feature from Casio. And uh, that was more than 12 years ago. And this one has been running perfectly as far as the battery is concerned for 12 years. I've never had to open the watch or do any kind of maintenance for, for the battery because uh, the solar cells uh, around the face of this watch have been charging it up. So I'm expecting similar performance from these other tough solar watches that I've purchased this year. Another attractive feature, of course, on these watches is what Casio calls multiband six. That means there's a radio receiver built into each of these watches, and that receiver will receive atomic time information from any of six atomic time transmitters in various parts of the world. So depending on where you are, you might be within range of a transmitter in China. There are two in Japan. There's one in North America. There's also uh, one in the UK and one in Germany. So. If you are within range of any of those transmitters, then uh, these watches are going to automatically turn on their receivers every night around midnight and try five or six times to receive atomic time information and keep themselves perfectly accurate right down to the second. Uh, if though, if, as soon as it receives and properly processes the atomic time information, it will stop trying. So if it, if it gets the atomic time information on the first try, it won't try the other four or five times for the rest of that night. So that's fun. That's another maintenance free idea here. Uh, again, you don't have to worry about the battery. And with any luck, you never have to worry about setting the time even daylight saving time will be automatically adjusted with these watches. Other standard features on these watches are typical of um, a lot of digital watches. Here's uh, well, okay, press this button down here on the lower left. And this tells you the battery charge state. In this case, it's, it's high. So it's a fully charged battery there. Press it again, and now you have the world time display. And this one is set to UTC at the moment. And so that's telling me the, the, the UTC time. I've got it in a 12 hour mode here. And then the analog hands are always going to show the local time. You can uh, change to any, basically any other time zone in the world for that second uh, you know, world time display down here. Next, uh, there are five alarms and an hourly signal that you can have, you know, just where it beeps every hour on the hour. Then there's a stopwatch. And uh, with the stopwatch, it, it uh, does, let's see, minutes and seconds. And then when you stop the watch, it will show you the hundredths of a second down there. Then to reset that, you press this button on the lower left again. And uh, there you go. The next function is a countdown timer. And this is something that was not available on the original, uh, the one that I got a few years ago. So with the countdown timer, you can set it to uh, from one minute up to 
100 minutes. So right now it's set to 0000, zero, zero, zero which means that's 100 minutes. If I press this button here on the lower right, it'll start counting down 100 minutes. And then when it's done, it'll, it'll beep just like one of the other daily alarms. So, and then if I want to reset that, I just hold this button down here, the same button I used to start and stop it. So those are the main functions there. Again, getting back into the stopwatch mode, uh, there is no split time or lap time function on that. It's either, it's just start and stop on there. So that's one thing that's uh, missing there that's available on a lot of other digital watches. And I think part of the reason that uh, that's been taken away from this is that, uh, again, they've tried to simplify this watch by only having three buttons to access all the functions and features. I think that having three buttons actually makes it a little bit less intuitive to use than that uh, original version I got years ago that had four buttons. But once you get used to it, it's, it's not so bad. This main uh, button up here on the, uh, on the upper right side, that's the main button for uh, adjusting things. So if I push that, it actually activates a, a, a light down here. I'll show you the light in, in just a moment. If you hold it down, that's when you start to get into some of the, uh, the setup stuff. Here's where you can choose if you want the, the uh, digital display to be a 12 hour or 24 hour mode there. Push this button on the lower left to choose again your time zone, your home time zone. So you'll use this button here on the lower right side to just scroll ahead to the next time zone to the east. And as you go around, uh, around the globe as it were, you'll find finally your home time zone um, named after the, a major city in that time zone. In my case, mountain time zone, United States, that's the Denver time zone. Okay, next is daylight saving time. If you want daylight saving time to be automatically displayed, or if you want it to always be off or always be on, that's where you select that. Then you can go in here and you can uh, manually set hours, minutes, and seconds. There's seconds, there's hours, minutes, the year, the uh, month, and, and date. Those can all be manually set. And then once the watch receives atomic time information from its radio receiver, uh, it's going to override your manual settings there on the time and date. Uh, here, uh, okay, every time you press this button here to get into a new mode, or if you start and stop the stopwatch, by default, there's a little bit of a beep that you're going to hear. But in this screen right here, you can push this button on the lower right and you can mute that so that you don't have a little beep every time you press a button. And then here you can choose a language. So uh, it's going to be able to, uh, to show you the day of the week along with the date. And you can have that right now. It's in English or you can select, what is that? German, Spanish. Uh, Chinese, Japanese. So you have those options there. And then when you go back to, see, those are the only things you can set up on this mode. Okay. So now see there, there it's showing me that today is Sunday, the 23rd. I can also have, uh, by pressing this button down here, I could have it always show me seconds in this display, or I could have it show, you know, the, the local time. So just kind of a backup to the, uh, What's showing on the analog hands could be down here in 24 hour mode, or it could just be like this in 12 hour mode and reinforcing what the, what the hands up there say. Now let's just quickly look at, uh, here's the American version of the watch and you know, it's, it's mostly metal, but as you look at it, there are some obviously plastic pieces around here, the side. And so some people are bothered by that. I haven't had any trouble with my older watch that has that same thing. Some of the pieces appear to be plastic, but it uh, looks like it's okay. This particular one, it looks like there's no way to replace this watch band with, uh, you know, if you want to try to install some other uh, bracelet on here. Doesn't look like it's very easy to adapt this to something else. But actually, now let's take a look at this Japanese one. That does look like uh, using just a regular jeweler's spring bar tool. You could probably take this watch band off and you could replace this with a different watch band of your choice. Uh, this one appears to have, again, the same pieces that are plastic, but they're kind of painted to look metal. So that's kind of nice there. Another, another big difference between this American version and the Japanese version is the way that you add or remove links from this bracelet in order to size the watch band. So it used to be you'd need some kind of special jeweler tool 
to uh, to take those off. It's kind of a hassle. But as you can see right here, there are just some little just some little holes there in the middle of each of those links where, that you can adjust. Let me just show you this in close up. You see, it comes with a just a little tool like this. It's kind of the same width as the watch band. It has a little plastic nub right there. And all you have to do in order to get a link out is you push this down so that that nub goes in that little hole there. Okay, push it down. And then that releases the link. Um, I don't know how well you can see right here inside the link. There are just a couple little couple little pins that stick out there. And see, the thing is, when you push something down into this hole, it pushes those pins out of the way and loosens them so that it's very, very easy using this tool to, uh, you know, release, release those pins, line it up, let go and see now they're linked together. So that makes it pretty easy as long as you don't lose this tool, but it's not too specialized. I think uh, if you didn't, if you lost this, you could still just use so, something blunt that's about the same size that you could push in there, you know, like a toothpick or something, and you know, just be careful about it. You can still do it even if you lose this piece. But uh, you know, I recommend you don't lose this piece because it makes it very easy. Now, by contrast, this Japanese version here, uh, this doesn't have any special tools to adjust the watch band. All you do, okay, let's, let's say that, that's how it looks when, uh, you know, when it's on your wrist, right? So then when you open it up like this, if you just release that right there, this is very interesting. This side of the bracelet can slide in and out to, uh, to adjust the size. So, you know, I put it right there and then just click that back, back down. And then when you wear it on your wrist, you're going to have a little bit of this uh, extra bracelet just kind of hanging, hanging there against your wrist, but uh, it's really not uncomfortable. And then uh, again, to, to open it, you just squeeze these two things together. And what that does is that uh, releases that clasp. So uh, they've come a long way to making it very easy for you as the user to adjust the, the size of your watch bracelet without having to go to a jeweler. And this one here that came with this uh, almost like this, you know, heavy fabric kind of canvas style uh, watch band here. Well, this is kind of nice. It has it has these little metal rings here where the holes are for that. It You know, it's all kind of self-contained, kind of a leather leather back there. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last in the long run, but I, I kind of like the way it looks. And again, I think that if this ever wore out, I could probably re replace it pretty easily just using a spring bar tool. It's kind of tight in there, so it might be a little difficult to, to get it in there and release this watch band and replace it. But uh, I don't think it's going to be much problem. And you know, it's, it's, it's fairly tough. I think it's kind of nice. Now I should mention these watches for the American market, both this older one and the newer one. Uh, the, 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 the crystal has a little bit of a convex shape, a little bit of a dome shape. So I suppose that makes it a little bit vulnerable to scratching, you know, if you're not too careful with it. Um, so again, they both have that a little bit. So that might be a concern if you think you're rough with your watches. You've got to be careful with those. These ones from the Japanese market, it looks like the crystal is basically flat on top, but you can see that it kind of sticks up from the case of the watch uh, significantly. So again, it could be vulnerable to scratches. I'm not sure how to advise you on that other than, hey, be careful with your watches. Or I've seen other videos online singing the praises of this product, PolyWatch, and uh, I, I'm not going to make a full video on this. I'll just tell you that uh, I've had a very good experience. It, it seems to live up to the hype. So PolyWatch, if you want to polish out some of those uh, minor scratches on your watch crystal, this, re this really does wonders. I, uh, it's very, very impressive. In fact, in a video that I made previously, I showed this watch and I, I noted that there was a kind of a gouge, kind of a scratch in the crystal, and I wasn't sure what to do about it. That was before I used PolyWatch. And maybe if I angle this just right so you can kind of see from the glare, let me see if I can adjust the exposure so you can see that a little bit better. You see, there's just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a deformed look on the, on the light right there where it's not quite as smooth as you would expect. But boy, that's a far cry from what it looked like before when I had a pretty unsightly scratch there.
So get yourself some poly watch and enjoy your watches. Uh, also, I just wanted to show you, I don't know how well you can see, just some minor scratches and things. O over the years, I've had this watch about six years, and you can see there are some minor scratches on the bracelet. You know, not no big deal, but that's the kind of wear and tear you're going to get after about six years. I don't know if somehow this titanium is going to stand up to scratches better in the long run, but I, I suppose in the future I can, uh, I can have a video and show you how well the titanium has handled any, any kind of abuse over the years. Here's a quick demonstration on how the backlight works on each of these watches. First, here's the old, uh, the old version. See, so it just lights up the uh, LCD display. Now, the newer American market version, see, it just has a light that comes out down here by the, the number six on the dial and shines up towards the dial. In total darkness, it doesn't do a lot to light up uh, the, the LCD readout, but it does help you see the hands a little bit. So now here's one of the Japanese models with the dark blue face. Here's that uh, green one. Okay. This uh, white one here, uh, that, that light actually does a pretty good job of lighting up the face because the face is white there. Still doesn't do a, a great deal for the LCD display. And of course, the titanium one, very similar performance uh, on the white face there. Now, uh, the other thing that they each have is a little bit of glow-in-the-dark luminescence. So let me just shine a little bit of a uh, black light on here and you can see how that lights up. There's the old, uh, old version. There's the new American market version. There's again from uh, Japan, the blue one, the green one. Look at that, the, all those numbers on the green one have illumi uh, the, the luminescent material on them, so they light up. Uh, that's an interesting look there. And then these white ones just have the little dots around, around the face for that glow-in-the-dark feature. And finally, let's just compare these watches on the scale. This is the original American version I got. Weighs in at 96 grams. The newer American version that I, that I bought weighs at 83 grams. So then, how about this uh, blue one from Japan that I got? 90 grams. Okay, that should be very similar to this, uh, this other one I got uh, from, from Japan. 90 grams. But look, look, compare this one to the titanium version and look at that. Only 63 grams. So uh, you've, you've cut about one third of the weight away by going with the titanium, uh, tiny titanium pieces on this watch. And finally, the one that has the kind of canvas fabric, uh, look at that, weighing in at a very lightweight, 35 grams. So that could be a very comfortable watch for you to wear. So that's it. Thanks for hanging in there. It was a long video, but I tried to be thorough, tried to answer all the questions I had before I bought the watches. Uh, I think I like them all. So uh, see which one you like and, you know, have, have fun with it. And I'll, I'll see you again on another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.